Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. Today I would like to start with a very exciting announcement. I wrote a book about painting watercolor transparent flowers and the book is already available for pre-order. It will be about painting in my favorite transparent technique. A lot of step-by-step -step instructions, a lot of inspiring pictures, a lot of my tips and tricks. The link will be everywhere. <laughs> I hope you will love it. About today's lesson, and although it's snow all around, I could feel spring vibes and that's why we are going to paint a beautiful bouquet of daffodils. So let's start. We could see daffodils from different sides and if you look on it from the front, we will see six petals in clusters of three. It's Mercedes sign, then a little bit tilted. And of course, what uh, separates daffodils out of all other flowers is so-called cup or the crown. This beautiful center uh, with, uh, of course, with style and stamens around. So that's pretty easy. Uh, challenges come when we see the flower looking a little bit on the side. So now let's paint, uh, draw um, stem, and then we have to tilt a little bit this circle, make it oval like this, find the center, again three and three clusters of three, and uh, another cluster. Um, one cluster is always on the top of the other, so be uh, careful on that. Now we could see, we finally could see the crown. And that's pretty fun to paint. Depending, of course, on the daffodils, uh, it could be either bigger, smaller. Let's paint it rather big. Something like this. Usually, if it is a big one, you uh, can hardly see a uh, pistil and stamens, but you could maybe give an idea about that. And when we see the flower from a little bit aside, then we could see this spaf around. It's usually a, a dry leaf and a bit of ovary and pretty easy with leaves. And probably the last um, uh, point, how we could see the flower. I mean, we could turn it whenever we like, but that's the most uh, beautiful views. When we could see it right on, on the side, then we do not see all six petals. We could see only mm, side ones. One, two, three. Usually this is it. And the crown. Again, it could be either small, but with the small, it um, lo um, a little bit loses the beauty. So I, I would prefer to paint it bigger and visible, like this. So that will be the crown. Uh, of course, you could add a little bit more of other details, but that's all up to you. It's very important to add the spaf. It's a pretty unique feature of the flower. And we have three different styles of daffodils. You could transfer your drawing onto watercolor paper or just map out a little bit. I would like to paint a bouquet of three. One is tilted to the left, another is tilted to the 
right, maybe a little bit more than the previous one, and one more or less looking fr in front. So that's my preparation, and now let's start to paint. One of the difficulties with painting yellow flowers is, first of all, it very quickly get dirty, the color, and the second that it has a very short range between lights and darks. So I would recommend you to start paint very, very light. Um, let me show you. Very light. Uh, I have a bigger brush, synthetic round brush. I start from the center. I have my um, cheat sheet next to me. And um, with very soft moves, I keep my brush about 45 degrees to the paper. I start with the tip of the brush and then I press on the belly of the brush and release the pressure. Don't worry about um, pencil marks. It's easy to remove later. Uh, remember that we are painting a little bit of tilted flower. And another petal, tip of the brush, belly of the brush, back. Um, if it's more handy for you, you could try the same principle, but from the center to the edge. Tip of the brush, belly of the brush, some wiggle, wiggle moves, and... Mm, <laughs> and, the, and the end. Right now, at this moment, you could switch the brushes. Mm, you could use any yellow. I didn't mention, I think I have gamboge yellow, but it's all up to you which yellow you would like to have. While the paper is still wet, you could add a few more darker strokes, but um, I would recommend to do most of the elements a little bit later. Now let's paint the next one. As we paint in a bouquet, when uh, we paint a uh, kind of a conveyor or circle. We let uh, other part to dry nicely and um, we don't need to mix too much different colors. So let's, um, this one would be a little bit more tilted. So the forest petal would be very short like this. And this one will be much longer <laughs> about this. Um, it's nice to add just a little bit of elements while the paper is still wet to add these um, nice bleedings around. Don't overdo it. And remember with yellow color we have to be especially careful so this one will be uh, looking directly on us and that should be, I hope, the most easy one. So three petals. Always try to paint a little bit different, a little bit different moves, a little bit different uh, directions. It's uh, these are flowers, these are real flowers, not plastic flowers. So they all are very unique. They move uh, with the wind. So um, don't, uh, uh, let's say, let your hand <laughs> and let, let your hand play a little bit. So, um, while we were painting all these three parts, um, I think this one is almost dry. Let's check it. And let's paint uh, the other three petals cluster. Same principle. Now you could add a little bit more of color. Uh, we will. We are painting in this semi-transparent technique, which is uh, also lovely and very delicate. 
more of transparent technique I am showing in my new coming book, which I'm very, very proud and excited about. There will be a pretty, pretty amazing, beautiful projects to paint. And I hope you will love it. So, one. Um, next one. Mm, but wait, but wait. Uh, let's now emphasize and divide a little bit petals, especially when they are overlapping. It would be very, very beautiful. I am not outlining petals um, around all the petal. I add few little touches and I still try to keep everything very light and transparent and avoid taking uh, using too bold color otherwise it would be more complicated to uh, paint the crown here in case if you think that it's getting a little bit too dark you could use a piece of mm, paper towels carefully put on the top then remove it now it's much lighter I will leave it like this. It was not necessary to do, but I think it's nice to show the options. And actually we got a very funny texture here. So next um, flower, next petal. Tip of the brush, belly of the brush. You could come back to the tip of the brush and adjust uh, the shape. I like to wiggle a little bit with my brush because that creates some nice move to the flower. Now I'm switching the brushes. It's uh, handy to have a little bit different brushes so you don't mix them accidentally. I know that my smaller brush has bolder color on it. and. I add a little bit of contrast, a, li a little bit of touch, a um, little bit of touch to the petals very carefully. Like this. And now the third one. Third one, tip of the brush, belly of the brush, and one more go. Uh, in principle, uh, same same principle, but from the middle tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush, belly of the brush. Uh, the petals are wide here, so I do it in two goals. I come back to the starting point and paint the second half. We are painting in loose technique with a little bit touch of transparent. See idea um, and I encourage you to trust your hand, trust your brush, outline a little bit, maybe add some. Uh, it's the front petal so it wouldn't be too much happening on the um, on the tips of the petals so we could now start to add a little bit of idea of veins with the tip of the brush while the paper is still wet I add a little bit very soft idea of veins middle veins we are not painting all all the details here beautiful now let's um, Let's mix orange color. I will use Pyrrhol orange um, and uh, I think I have cadmium orange. Yes, that will work nicely. So for the crown, you could either use just the yellow or as I'm doing, I'm mixing yellow with cadmium orange.
know if that would be more helpful for you. You could map out a little bit the crown. It was not necessary to do it before, not to confuse you, but now you could um, do some extra drawings if that feel uh, makes you feel more comfortable. And we just painting this nice, beautiful cone. I recommend you to keep your paints as transparent, as light as you can. I think that's one of the most common difficulties with watercolor when uh, people starting to paint too bold in the very beginning. And with watercolor, you always could make things darker, but it's a bit of challenge to make things lighter. Uh, while I'm talking, I prepared an area for the, uh, for the crown. Uh, I'm a big fan of the crown uh, series, <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit funny for me to uh, say the crown each and every second right now. Um, anyway, with the tip of the brush, I add only on the top of the crown um, bold elements. I do it very randomly. I'm not painting a big bold line. So it will look pretty natural. Like this. I always could add more details later. For now I'm pretty happy. Let's repeat. Nice that they have free um, blooms here. So we could uh, repeat, <laughs> paint and repeat, paint and repeat. Let's draw. Let's draw. I think always nice to, um, how to say, not to follow the petal, but, um, you know, draw these details in between. In between a good word to explain what I mean. So same thing, same principle, but now I, I would like to paint it a little bit more stripy. You see uh, the paper was not really dry enough here, so it's uh, mixing, which is totally fine. And now I'm gripping bold bold right from the palette a little bit of bold orange cadmium orange and with tipping moves I create this top of the crown idea are there any fans of a crown of the crown series here I just finished to watch the last season. Now I'm very sad <laughs> because <it's laughs> it was a very good one. I mean, the whole series. So anyway, that's another one. Now you could check out what's happening here. Maybe it's, it is still wet and I think it crying for a little bit more of boldness. Um, when we paint daffodil in looking right directly on us, I would recommend you just to outline the crown with these zigzag moves. Bring this super watery color. It's very, very transparent. Everything is super delicate. And now, to make it bold, I go with the tip of the brush with super bold orange color randomly around this watery area and just let my watercolor mix by itself.
I dry my brush with a paper towel. I will show you. Remove excess water. And lift a little bit colors in the middle. This is nice. Now I think we could um, put everything on the stems. One, once flowers are on the stems, it um, all makes sense. Um, you could see the composition pretty, pretty well. For the green color, I will take this uh, phthalo green and mix it with burnt sienna to make it softer or more sage green. You could also use some of your favorite greens or olive green if you have in your palette. Shouldn't be too bold, too, too middle, it's just stems. So let's put um, our flowers on a stem. To make it correct, the stem should connect with the middle. So your stem can't start here, can't start there. You have to paint imaginary line from the center and then to the point. And now let's just paint the stem. I apply just a little bit of pressure to my brush and let it go. Stems are not main heroes here. I don't want to go very much into details. Um, it's important, this, this bloom is really almost um, facing to the side from us, so we could see these, um, these 90 degrees um, bent of the stem, and I think it would be nice to show it again. Find the point of the middle, imaginary line, imaginary line, and then you paint. And then you turn, oops, it's okay. Just, you usually if you are quick, you could remove all the unnecessary things just with a paper towel right away. So, one more. And this, this is the middle. Imaginary line, imaginary line, imaginary line, and the stem. You could always come back and correct and add the thickness to the stem. Just like this. Now it's time to paint spathe. For the spathe, I uh, will take burnt sienna, diluted. Uh, usually it, it's about this size and could look either up, for example, like this. I think it is a little bit too dark, so I wash my brush, remove excess water with a paper towel and soften a little bit the Same here. It's nice to think how it could look better for your composition. You probably will have your reference, um, but sometimes we could adjust everything we see better. Maybe it feels nice to add this space just here. And same so here. Here, I imagine it could go a little bit down. Now, I lift a little bit of the excess color, grab bold, bold brown, burnt sienna, almost dry brush. You could remove water with a paper towel with the tip of the brush. Add a little bit of lines, strokes, in this space area. 
very um, quick moves. The quicker you paint, the fewer time you have to overthink. Sometimes it's good to <laughs> think it through, but sometimes with small elements, it's you just paint. You just add a few brush strokes and that's enough to bring the whole idea of what are you doing. Let's add the final touch. Let's add a little bit boldness to the stems. Boldness and thickness. Maybe some ovary. We could see a little bit of ovary here. The area where um, space sits on the stem could be a little bit bolder. It creates some shading. Same for all the stems, of all three stems. Small little details. Some brush strokes. I, I don't go into very much of details. That's nice enough. Now, as a final touch, I would like to add more details into the uh, blooms. But first of all, I would like to remove the pencil marks. Now, the fun part co comes. It's all the details. I have my yellow color on, on the tip of the brush. And with the tip of the brush, I'm starting to paint details and veins. Um, daffodils, they have a um, bit of a thickness in the area of the middle vein. So you could emphasize that. Also, once you paint like this, a little bit bold and curvy element, that shows that um, the petal is turning slightly has a bent uh, bent area which is nice and pretty unique i would recommend you not to overdo things small little details where it feels necessary don't um no not don't avoid avoid painting um thick bold lines It's nice to uh, add some boldness, thickness into all the points of petals and slightly divide them. Usually the area under the crown is very dark because of the shade, but it's very important when we paint with yellow, we don't add browns for example to create shade it will make everything very dirty and um, not so shiny that's enough it feels like very nice crispy crispy flower I actually i like how it is very spontaneous and loose um, so you could stop just here um, for those who want who are more into detailed painting, let's add some details around, curves, some bands, curves, veins. To have more control on your brush, on your brush strokes, you have to hold your brush almost next to the ha hairy area. Then you will have more control and you could paint... Uh, small little details like veins without stress. Now the fun part co comes, it's all the details. I have my yellow color on, on the tip of the brush 
And with the tip of the brush, I'm starting to paint details and veins. Um, daffodils, they have a um, bit of a thickness in the area of the middle vein. So you could emphasize that. Also, once you paint like this, a little bit bold and curvy element, that shows that um, the petal is turning slightly, has a bent, uh, bent area, which is nice and pretty unique. I would recommend you not to overdo things. Small little details where it feels necessary. Don't, um, no, not don't, avoid, avoid painting um, thick, bold lines. It's nice to uh, add some boldness, thickness into all the points of petals and slightly divide them. Usually the area under the crown is very dark because of the shade, but it's very important when we paint with yellow, we don't add browns, for example, to create shade. It will make everything very dirty and um, not so shiny. That's enough. It feels like very nice, crispy, crispy flower. Actually, I like how it is very spontaneous and loose um, so you could stop just here um, for those who wants who are more into detailed painting let's add some details around curves some bands curves veins to have more control on your brush on your brush strokes you have to hold your brush almost next to the ha hairy area then you will have more control and you could paint uh, small little details like veins without stress um, a little bit of shades in the bottom area with dark, bold, yellow. Uh, I usually uh, always try to remove excess color with a paper towel and soften all the edges and distribute color just about like this. Mm. With these sort of brush strokes we add a little bit of volume, a little bit of texture around and now our front. Uh, front flower, middle vein. If it feels a little bit too bold, wash your brush and soften things. Now let's add a little bit of shade into the bottom areas. Wash your brush, dry with a paper towel. And soften, soften in uh, direction to the bottom. Very gentle. Now let's paint for this one. Um, pistil and stamens. Um, let me think. I think we could use just orange color. Our orange color mixed with yellow. Always start lighter. You could always add some darkness. So pistol, maybe even with a little bit of brown. And stimens. They all should start from one point. But they might look in different directions. But usually um, all goes, all go to the bottom, all go to the bottom, all go into the bottom. And now 
um, brown, brown, burnt sienna in my case. Now let's add these um, anthems, this just soft, very gentle, small touches of uh, brown color. And you see, in principle, it's enough to get the idea of what's happening with the flower. Add some brush strokes with the tip of the brush with orange color, all coming to the middle. To create a little bit of depth in this, inside the crown. Just like this. Now uh, you could keep adding details. Um, and the important rule, which I remind to myself and to all my students, it's important to stop at the right moment, which is not happening yet. A few more, few more bold details to the um, space area. And this is it. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you got this spring vibe. I hope you enjoyed the process, which is the most important. And I'm looking forward for your suggestions about next paintings. And see you next time. Bye bye.